I can remember as a young adult, uh, I had moved to a new place, and there was a lady in our church, her name was Ruth, and uh, she would come and she would greet me. She was just a kind person, uh, and the love of Jesus was just there. She, I think she was maybe 90 years old, but she'd come up and she'd shake my hand and she'd ask me how I was doing, and just something about her kindness was always an encouragement. Have you known people like that? We've got some people like that in this church. And I thank God for you. Uh, it's amazing how just a, a word of encouragement can lift a person up. And God has called us to build each other up, hasn't he, as God's people. Um, the scripture we're looking at today uh, addresses this very thing. Uh, Saul of Tarsus has been converted by Jesus Christ. Uh, he's been changed, and at first they're afraid to let him come to church. There's such a drastic change that has happened. Uh, they're not sure uh, whether or not uh, that it's safe to let him come, but finally Barnabas comes. See, Barnabas is called the son of encouragement. He comes, and he welcomes Paul and, and brings him to the apostles and says, hey, this is what happened to Paul. He was converted. He saw the Lord on the Damascus Road. And uh, he's been changed. And he's been speaking the Lord's word boldly. Uh, and, and he's involved. And so um, they receive him. And he's going in and out for a few days. He sees Peter. And he sees James, the Lord's brother, as Galatians tells us. Uh, and uh, and they, they receive him. And they, then he is debating uh, with the Grecian Jews. Well, they, they get upset with him, and he, he takes off, and they, they whisk him away to Caesarea. Uh, but the church enters into a new time of peace and encouragement, and it begins to thrive uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit and through the fear of God that is there. Um, we need God's encouragement, and we need to be encouragers uh, to each other. Uh, and the, the title of my message is The Spirit's Ministry of Encouragement. The Spirit's Ministry of Encouragement. And if you'll look with me at Acts chapter 9 and verse 26, we'll read this scripture. It says, When he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, since they did not believe that he was a disciple. Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles, and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road, and that the Lord had talked to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He conversed and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers found out, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of God and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. And it increased in number. So the Spirit's ministry of encouragement. How does he encourage us? Well, first of all, he encourages us through transformed lives. He encourages us through transformed lives. What an amazing thing to see someone who was a persecutor of the church of God made into a child of God and ultimately into an advocate for Christianity. He's going around and he starts all these churches and is doing just such a great work of God. Uh, one thing I love and that I have enjoyed over the years is talking to a new Christian who has a past. Uh, the, I know we all have a past. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there's something about a Christian. Jesus said, those who've been forgiven much, love much. And to see somebody who has been saved by the grace of God, and they're just overflowing with joy and excitement because their sin is under the blood of Jesus. They've been cleansed. They've been washed. They've been reconciled. And they can't get over it. They're excited about it because Jesus has changed their life. I never get, that never gets old to me. I love seeing the excitement of new Christians who've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Um, transformed lives are an encouragement. Sometimes God changes somebody's life 
uh, as a Christian. He, maybe he helps them grow or he helps them overcome uh, sin or a, a problem in their life. But, but he's, he's working in their life and he's bringing change and he's bringing renewal. That's an exciting thing. Um, if you know someone in this church who has been instrumental in changing your life, you need to tell them about it. You need to say, hey, God has used you in my life. God has worked a change in my life because of your faithfulness to the Lord. You know how rare it is for somebody to do that? It, it's generally pretty rare. Jesus healed how many lepers? Ten. How many came back and said thank you? One. Okay. It's usually... A rare thing. And that will be such a great encouragement. Uh, but then also, if you are working and serving Christ, you do that ministry by faith, whether somebody comes to you and tells you you've changed their life or not, right? You do ministry by faith. When I was a mechanic, I used to fix things, right? And I could tell what I was fixing. I could see it when it was done. It, I mean, you turn the, turn the ignition, it would, it would start up or it wouldn't, right? You could tell the difference that was made. A lot of times that's not the case with people. You don't see what God is doing in the heart of someone else. But as you are faithful to God, as you persevere in doing what God has called you to do, God takes responsibility to do the work and to move in a person's life. So our responsibility is faithfulness. Uh, it's God's responsibility to change lives. But uh, how exciting it is when he does. And uh, what, a, what a joy uh, it is to see God at work. Um, so the Spirit's ministry of encouragement, how does he encourage us? He encourages us through transformed lives. Secondly, he encourages us through restored peace. He encourages us through restored peace. Look at verse 31. So the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace. Now they didn't have peace before this, right? Saul was carrying people off to prison. Uh, he had put some to death. Um, others had, been, had fled from the city. There were probably families that were separated from one another. They had been going through a great trial, a great ordeal. But now peace has come back to the church. Now they have a time to take a deep breath, uh, to focus on the Lord and what he is doing. And, and, and it is such a refreshment. I've shared with you before about uh, a season, a very difficult season in a previous church. And God brought that church and, and me as, as a part of it. He brought us to a time of peace. And what a wonderful blessing that was. Did you know two, two months later, revival broke out in that church. And God was doing such a great work there. Um, my daddy, when, when he was pastoring his first church, there were two men in the church who were uh, bitter at one another. And we were having a scheduled revival meeting. One of those men went over to the other man and he, he said, look, he said, please forgive me. I've sinned against you. They made up and they had been angry at each other for decades. And revival broke out in the church. There's something about peace that God brings that just is a, as a spark for the work of God and the renewal of God to take place. And so this, this uh, ministry of encouragement often comes through restored peace. Now, you and I, uh, I had someone come to me uh, recently and, and was like, well, I've, you know, I've done what I can to try to restore a relationship and the other person won't cooperate. Well, if they won't cooperate, then you've done your part, right? You've gone, you've tried to make things right. Don't worry about it. Leave that result with God. Uh, but know that, that when peace comes between two who've been estranged, it can be such a powerful thing for your family, uh, for this church and for reaching others in, in our community. Um, so, uh, restored peace. Uh, the Spirit also encourages us, not just through the cessation of trouble outwardly, right? He encourages us through peace within, right? We've got peace with God if we know Jesus Christ. 
uh, our sins are under the blood of Jesus and we have peace with him. Uh, but we can also have the peace of God within us. And what a blessing that can be to encourage us. And uh, if, if you're a child of God, if you keep your sins confessed uh, and repent of your sin uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. The Holy Spirit can minister to you in this way and bring God's peace. Another way for that to happen is to bring your burdens to God in prayer with thanksgiving. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us that uh, God will bring the peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and minds in Jesus. Uh, and, and isn't that what we need? In this world, we see trouble everywhere we look in this world. But praise God, as his people. We can have peace with him. We can have the joy unspeakable and full of glory that Peter talks about because we know him. And we know that this life is not the last chapter. My Jesus is coming one day, and he's going to make things right. And I, I, I'm going to get excited if I keep going down that path. All right, so uh, the Spirit's ministry of encouragement, how does he encourage us? He encourages us through transformed lives. He encourages us through restored peace. Thirdly, he encourages us through edified hearts. Now, my translation says the church had peace and was strengthened. But literally what the Greek word means is it was built up, okay? Now, it says a little bit later that it increased in numbers. So I think this building up is not so much, although it could be talking about building up in numbers. I think this is talking about being built up spiritually. Uh, now that peace has come, they can relax and focus on ministering to other people. You know what I've noticed about trouble in churches? And this is one reason the devil uh, loves to, to bring trouble in churches. When there's trouble in the church, everybody is focused on the trouble. And they're not focused on ministering to people and reaching lost people. Right? So, praise God, the trouble has ceased in this church uh, that, that uh, here in Jerusalem... And now God is bringing a time of edification and God's people are building each other up and there's a refreshment that comes with it. How do we build each other up? Well, we can do that through a word of encouragement like I mentioned earlier, through kindness, right? Kindness is an encouragement. Have you ever just really been struggling? Maybe you've had a bad day. You, you know, you stubbed your toe. Uh, you wrecked the car. You, I mean, all these things are going on, and and then just somebody is kind to you. Isn't that that's just an encouragement, isn't it? Um, so, uh, but you can also build people up uh, by following the Spirit's leadership and encouraging. Uh, sometimes there may be somebody that the Holy Spirit wants you to call. That God just lays that person on your heart. You've got a burden for that person. And you feel like you need to call that person and encourage them. And you call them up. How you doing? And, and, you, you know, and, and then you begin maybe to tell them about some things God's doing in your life. Or perhaps you share a scripture. Hey, this scripture. I had a friend who used to do this all the time. He said, he said uh, hey, God blessed me through this scripture this morning. Let me share it with you. Let me share what I wrote in my journal. <laughs> and he would, he would read the, a few verses of that scripture to us and then read what he wrote. And just a, a, almost every single time, I was blessed by it. And I was lifted up because, uh, he, what was he doing? He was built up in his quiet time by the work of God in his life, right? So he's taking that and he's using it to build up others. Did you know that you can do that with your kids? Uh, if you need to be a spiritual leader, a uh, husband, father, uh, in your home, one way you can do that is you're having your quiet time with God and God speaks to you, share it with your kids. Hey, God blessed me this morning. I, I, I read that. Now, if they're little, you may have to make it the reader real small, Reader's Digest condensed version. Hey, God spoke to me and he encouraged me today. Maybe something like that. But you can share those truths, and uh, I, I was struggling one time. I remember asking God, "Want to help me be a spiritual leader?" And I just felt like that's what God wants me to do. Just tell your kids when you're blessed in your quiet time. Let let them know what God's doing in your life, and it was an encouragement to them. 
So uh, you can be an encouragement through something you share. Uh, we can be encouraged through music, right? Isn't that a great way to receive encouragement? I like to do music uh, in my quiet time. I, I just love music. I love to worship God. And so I, I pull out my phone, and I've got one of those speakers, you know, that it will hook, hook up my Bluetooth. And I'll play that thing, and I'll just sing to the Lord, and, and assuming everybody's awake, I'll sing to the Lord and, uh, and worship Him. And what a refreshment and encouragement that is uh, to draw near to God. It's, uh, there's an old song uh, I remember learning as a boy, Turn your eyes on Jesus and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. And that's true. As you worship God, your focus goes upon Him, and the things of this world go strangely dim, and you can have joy in your heart amidst everything that's going on because the Spirit of God is edifying you through that music that you're, you're taking time. If you come to this church, you can be edified through that music. So what a wonderful thing. You can be edified through the preaching of the Word of God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Now, I'm not saying that because I'm the preacher, okay? I, I, I'm talking about preaching in general. Listen, there have been times when God has lifted me up and encouraged me and refreshed me when, when I've listened to the preaching of someone else. And what a wonderful blessing that is. You know what I found? A lot of people are discouraged and defeated because they don't come to the house of God and listen to the Word of God. They don't receive the edification that God has supplied. It's like uh, one, one preacher told me, uh, he had a guy come up to him after service. He said, hey, you need to preach a message on this topic. And he said, well, I did last Sunday, and you weren't here. <laughs> you see, a lot of times we miss the blessing that God has because we're just not taking advantage of it. So God can give edified hearts in that way. Um, he gives edified hearts through the fellowship of God's people. One reason I love Sunday school or a small group setting is that we can get together and just a few of us and we can share what we're going through. We can pray. We can uh, share what God's doing in our lives. And there's an edification and a oneness and a strength that comes from that. Uh, that lifts us up and edifies us. And, and so this church is receiving this edification. They're not having to worry about, is Saul going to come drag us off and trying to meet in secret and that kind of thing? They are able to openly do the things that God intends the church to do. Uh, so the Holy Spirit brings a ministry of encouragement through Transform lives, restored peace, edified hearts, renewed energy. Uh, my translation says living in the fear of God. That the, the word living is literally in the original, the word going. Uh, and uh, it's a participle, going in the fear of God and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So going. Uh, did you know something? This church has gone through great persecution, but it's still going. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't it great that God can take us through trials and heartache and trouble and things that we can't handle, and he can bring us out the other side? We're still going for Jesus. I want to be like one of those uh, elderly adults that... Uh, that just is still excited about Jesus Christ. I, I don't want to be a grumbly, hateful old person. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God and excited about what Jesus is doing. Uh, I want to still be going for Him. And you know, listen, we can. Uh, we can be going. Uh, sometimes we come to the end of ourselves, don't we? Uh, maybe, maybe you are... Um, dealing with a trial in your life. And it's just kind of like, uh, you know, they used to, to, to coach the, the boxing uh, fellows. They'd say, hey, you know, work that body. It'll wear them out. Work that body. And then you can boom, go for the knockout punch. Uh, and, and maybe you feel like you've been taking those punches. And, and life has just got you weary and worn out and at the end of yourself. But can I tell you something? 
through the supernatural power and encouraging work of the Holy Spirit, you can keep going for Jesus Christ. You can keep your joy. You can keep your excitement. You can be uh, sustained in your faith in the things of God. Why? Because it is a supernatural encouragement. I love Isaiah 40, and one of the things he says is, uh, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I love the character of Caleb in the Bible. Caleb uh, was a righteous man. That's one reason to love him. Uh, he, was, he was a man of faith. Uh, he was a warrior. So you guys, are, you like the testosterone, you know, action move. He was a warrior. But the Bible says that he trusted God. He and Joshua trusted God when nobody else would trust him. And for 40 years in the wilderness, because God would not let them go into the promised land, because they didn't believe him for it, they're having about three funerals, three to five funerals a day, as all those people die off in those 40 years in the wilderness. And they get to the end of that 40 years, and Joshua's about to take them into the land, and it says this about Caleb. His eye had not dimmed. His strength had not waned. He said, give me this mountain that God has given me as my inheritance. And he went up with a bunch of young bucks and took that mountain from the Canaanites and set up his dwelling to live in the promised land. Caleb, man, what a man of God. His eye did not dim. His strength did not wane. Why? Because he had learned what it means to wait upon the Lord and to have his strength renewed. That's the Spirit's ministry of encouragement. He renews our energy. So he brings a ministry of encouragement out through transformed lives, restored peace, edified hearts, renewed energy, and multiplied followers. It says these words at the latter part of verse 31, the church increased in numbers. The church increased in numbers. God began to multiply what he was doing. Now, numbers are not the only thing that churches are judged by, right? Because Jesus says that uh, in the book of Revelation, <clears throat> He tells one church, you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. He, t he, he tells another church, you have a reputation for being dead, but you're alive. Uh, you know, so there is, there is a work of God that is not always manifested to the outside world. But what an encouragement it is when God begins to just pour out his spirit and bring blessing. And people are saved. And lives are changed. Oh, Lord, let it begin. Let it come. Let that revival come. Um, I've seen a little bit of revival before in my past, and I've seen people around the altar weeping over sin and, and repenting of their sin. I've seen people come to the altar needing Christ and not leaving the altar till they find Him. I've seen them changed by the grace of God. I've seen the Spirit come down. Listen, can I tell you something? God can do more in two minutes than we can do in 200 years. He has such power. And when He comes and He works, what an awesome encouragement it is. They, gave, they had multiplied numbers. Can you imagine? I, I bet because of this persecution, a lot of people have been scattered, right? So their numbers were way down. Kind of like COVID, right? Their numbers were way down. I mean, they were, they, it was like, uh, it looked like the rapture had come and they had been left behind, right? I mean, it was just, it was bad. And so uh, now God brings this peace. God brings his blessing. 
And he is just refreshing this church. He is ministering to this church. And one of the ways he does it is by letting them see people come to faith in Jesus Christ. Did you know that's my desire is to see us reach people for Jesus Christ. You know, God may send people here to serve in this church. He may lead them by his spirit because he knows there's some role that they need to fulfill. But my heart is not to go steal somebody else's church members. We have, you know, there's enough. Uh, listen, we need to reach people who are lost. I am so excited that this church has a ministry to go out and knock on doors for Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you, it's tough. It's tougher than it was when I was a boy. I, I did some of it when I was a boy. Uh, but can I tell you something? Jesus still changed his life. So we've seen people pray and receive Christ. We've seen God do it. Uh, this is what it's all about, is reaching people with the message of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for God to give us a harvest of souls in this place. For Jesus Christ. The Spirit's ministry of encouragement. How does he encourage us? He encourages us through transformed lives. Through restored peace. Through edified hearts. Through renewed energy. And through multiplied followers. I want to tell you something. The Spirit does a work of encouragement in our lives. And, and he may encourage you in one of these ways we've mentioned. But there's many ways he's encouraged me over the years. He's very creative in how he does it. He might, uh, you might hear a song, you might have a, uh, something said, maybe not even intended for you by that person, but it was intended for you by God, and you overhear it and it encourages you. Perhaps you watch the example of someone else, but <clears throat> there can be a lot of ways that God encourages us but can I tell you something? If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have that encouragement. I can remember the days before I came to Christ and uh, just the emptiness I felt. I came to a church. Uh, my parents would bring me to church. It wasn't an option. Uh, we were brought to church. If we, they didn't ask our opinion about it. They just brought us, right? Which, thank God for that. I, I praise God for parents who had the character to make me do what sometimes I didn't want to do. They brought me to church, <clears throat> and um, I can remember being under conviction, but I, I just remember the emptiness that I had in my heart. And I was miserable. And God was dealing with me, but I was just lost. And I needed to repent of my sin and put my trust in Christ. After about a year's time, <clears throat> finally I... I surrendered my life to Christ. And I felt the weight of my guilt. Now, I, I realize you don't have to have the same experience as me, okay? Just, we're saved by faith, not by experience, all right? Just, but this is what the Lord did in my life. I, the guilt, the weight of the guilt that I was carrying was gone. Jesus took care of it. And I had a new joy in my heart. And that empty place was filled by Jesus. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I would give you the worst day I've had as a Christian in exchange for all the rest of them before. Jesus Christ is, is life personified. And when he comes into your life, he brings a peace. He brings a joy that you can't find anywhere else. And it's not dependent on circumstance. Um, you can have it when your child is sick. I can testify to that. Uh, you, can, you can have it uh, when there's trouble all around you. You can find joy. David said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous walk in and they are safe. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You worship God in the midst of your trial. Can I tell you something? There's a place of security in his presence like you can't describe. This is the Spirit's ministry of encouragement. Can I tell you something? I know a lot of people are nervous. And they think you're going to do something weird if you talk about the Holy Spirit nowadays. But the Spirit of God is a great blessing for the people. He is a wonderful blessing. And uh, he is still at work today. He is still encouraging God's people. 
And he is so good. Can I encourage you to uh, ask God to fill you with the Spirit and let the Spirit live through you. And uh, not only will it bless you with his ministry, but it will open you up to be used in a greater way than you've ever been used before. So if you're God's child, that's your heritage. Take advantage of it. If you don't know Christ, uh, we're going to have a time of invitation. You can come, and uh, the Bible says all of sin. That's the problem. We're all guilty. Uh, but God sent Jesus Christ, who lived the perfect life that none of us could live, and died on the cross in our place to bear the sin and the penalty, uh, the justice of God, the wrath of God upon himself. He said, it is finished. It's paid in full. And he died, and he rose again. And the Bible says that because of what Jesus has done, if we'll repent of our sin, that is to choose to turn from our sin in our own way to follow Christ and receive his salvation as a gift, that God will save us because of what Jesus did. And it's a wonderful blessing. If you'd like to take advantage of that, I'd like me to help you with a prayer of repentance and trust in Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to come and down here at the front where I'll be standing here in just a moment as we begin to sing. Uh, if you're here today as a child of God, uh, maybe you just need the ministry of encouragement in your life today. Maybe you just need to come to, to this altar and say, Lord, I, I need a fresh touch. Would you just give me a fresh touch from you? Refresh me with your presence. Encourage me. Uh, maybe you want to come for prayer. I'd be happy to pray for you. If you're here today, you, perhaps you sense that God has led you to this church uh, to, to join with the membership of this church. Uh, and you sense this is where you're supposed to be. I'm going to invite you to come and get that process started officially, uh, becoming a, a member of this church. Perhaps you thought need to follow the believer's baptism. Whatever God is leading you to do, uh, respond to him uh, as, as we uh, begin to sing here in just a moment. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that we would respond to you uh, as you have touched our hearts and, and as you're moving us today. And uh, have your way in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and come. Mm -hmm. Page 413. Turn your eyes upon me. Mm -hmm. 